Aisha Hogan, visionary and founder of IAWESOME. IAWESOME is the International Academy of Universal Self Mastery. So big, long word, lovingly called IAWESOME, big, long title. And this is, this is, this is what I've been creating for the last 14 months. So it's been super, super exciting. And we have our launch party showing up, our big, big launch party showing up uh, July 10th and 11th. So if you look in the description, there is a link. It's a two day free webinar. And we have 30 of our iAwesome faculty um, that are going to be taking part in that. We'd have more of them, but they're just, the day is just not long enough. So um, the weekend's not long enough for everybody. So 30 of them. So it's going from 10 in the morning till seven at night, Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's going to be done interview style. So you're going to be able to interact with all of the teachers, which is wonderful. And everybody who attends gets a loop bag. So a loop bag is all the wonderful gifts that our speakers are offering the people who are attending. So I'm super excited. I'm super excited about the celebration, but I'm really excited today because I'm talking to Micah and this is Micah Edwards and he is from the tribe of Mango. And what I love about you, Micah, is just, you know, you've got this amazing energy. You've got this amazingness about yourself. You're so genuine. You're so authentic. You and, and those words are so overused, but really they I would say if, if, if they apply to anyone, they apply to you. And you just embrace who you are. You know, you embrace everything about yourself. And I love that about you. I think that it's an amazing and endearing quality, and everybody should really strive to be able to do that for themselves. And you have this incredible self-love and just this love of humanity and people. And no matter what adversity you have been through, you just seem to still find that love in you, which I think is just this amazing, amazing thing about you. And I keep using the word amazing and, and awesome, but I just don't know what else to use because it's just, it's it, it really is empowering. And every time I, I talk to you, I feel like my insides are smiling. Like it's just like this really great feeling. So I want to give you a chance to to talk about who you are first and introduce yourself to the people who are watching. And I'm going to be like looking over here every once in a while, just simply because I'm checking the comments and stuff, uh, if mm -hmm. any that are coming in and any questions that are coming in. So please, Micah, explain who you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do something else, okay? I'm not going to okay. explain who I am because I spent 10 years trying to do that and I have uh, not explained it. <laughs> and it it's ex <laughs> inexplainable. To explain who I am, I am inexplainable. Yeah. And I am a visionary just like Aisha and, um, and an artist and the cre creator of the Tribe of Mango. Um, I'm also a musician. <laughs> And uh, I um, understand that every human being, you know, has the space for themselves to thrive on the planet. We all are worthy of that. We were born worthy of that. And uh, I just got a little chill because, you know, that's what I, I, I stand for. Um, and what I do is that I design. Um, first, I'm a storyteller from Jamaica. And I stand for um, shifting what it what it's like to be queer especially queer and Jamaican and Caribbean. Um, and I'm very clear about that now in my life. And I love my family. I love um, evolutionary consciousness work, just like what Aisha, um, we are doing with the um, I Awesome. And it's just incredible for me to work in collaboration with folks who, you know, see a different perspective and a different approach that we can take in life. Um, that can have all of us live in like our fullness. Like, God, how juicy is that? And you can tell that I love to talk. I love to talk. And sometimes I don't like to talk, but I really love to connect. And I'm excited for this conversation today, Aisha. That's awesome. And you know what? What I love about I awesome, what I love about 
people such as yourself, beautiful souls such as yourself that have joined iAwesome is that I don't know that people really understand yet what it means, what iAwesome means. When we talk about collaboration, when we talk about come unity, the unity, right? When we talk about evolution, right? So, you know, we go back, we go back really far. So when you think about he, what humanity was, even beyond being two-legged people, you know, what we were way before that, um, there's a lot in our ancestry. There is a lot in our ancestry and we have evolved over time and the world has taken quantum leaps, whether it's in the animal kingdom or humanity, um, we've taken these huge leaps. And we, um, those of us who are sort of a little bit, you know, higher in our vibration, not saying I'm not, be, you know, people are at different levels, you know, it's just like your temperature, you're at a different temperature and it's fine. And um, we knew there's something coming. I've known it for years. I just didn't know what it was, right? So I knew something was coming. It didn't feel like doom and gloom. I just knew there was going to be some big change happening. And, you know, we're, and lots of people knew it. Lots of people knew it. Lots of people said it, but we didn't know what it was. And everybody had their kind of explanation for it, but it all came down to the same thing. And that is that we're getting prepared for another quantum leap. And that this humanity of selfless, selfless sorry, selfishness, of only thinking of ourselves as individual. Again, not selfishness in the shadow state. There is some of that too, as we've seen lately in the news, um, but more selfishness of, of thinking of ourselves separate from everything else that's out there. And this new quantum leap is going to be making us very cohesive so that I am you and you are me and we are going to be able and we, we understand that we're all connected and that understanding is just gonna be there. It's not something that we're gonna hope for or wish for or one day be able to grow into or stand in our, we're just gonna know that about ourselves and that we will be this individual but we'll also be very cohesive and connected. It's gonna be something like we've never done before. Almost like, and I'm gonna say this is gonna sound weird but almost like the insect community. Like when you think about ants and bees and, and things like they work together in this for, for one purpose, for the ultimate purpose of growth, mm -hmm. right? And, and we will be moving into something very similar to that. And so I love the idea of cooperation and community and collaboration. And we're just building our own hive, if you will. And we're starting and there's no I don't think there's a queen I don't call myself the queen of the hive but because we all matter we all matter so there's this really interesting stuff I was reading a little bit of your bio today and I love the fact that you've always called yourself a storyteller right so most people say oh I'm a I'm an influencer I'm a leader I'm a coach I'm a mentor you know but you come out with storyteller and Let's talk a little bit about what that means to you, Micah. Mm -hmm. I like how you say my name. And uh, <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt, but I just wanted to give a few snaps to what you just shared. Like, oh, mm. oh. yes. Um, storyteller. Um, the, the, the asking to explain, I want to explain everything. It's a part, it's like, I have a deep need to know. Right, I'm a seeker. I've been identified as a seeker. However, I've seen that my seeking and my explaining have brought me to where I am right now, recognizing that I can't explain everything, nor do I need to. I don't need no. to seek. However, I still seek because it's fun. And <laughs> I think that I've been figuring out what kind of creator I am. Like, am I a speaker? Um, I, I've always wanted to be an artist, but never knew how would that be because I never thought that I could be the artist I wanted to be. I thought I was a cook or a chef because I love cooking. Um, and then I thought I was like a businessman. I wanted to be a businessman. I'm like, that looks cute, right? CEO, entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I did that. I, 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 one of the things I discovered in life for me is that if I'm confused about something, go further into it. Just like dive deeper into it to the point of like, you can't, I can't be a confused anymore. So I tried on all of these uh, different titles and labels to describe me. And I was really exploring that. I even posted on my social media because that's the new thing. If you post on social media, it becomes real, right? 
<laughs> <laughs> so I tried out all of these uh, um, things that I was doing, model, I'm a, I want to do, you know, all of these things. And then I saw I was running this old structure of trying to figure out what title or label is me when, you know, I had to discover for myself, what, what truly do I want to, what is a part of my whole life? And it's conversations, I, I love, everything is a conversation for me, but I saw how connected to my heritage and growing up in Jamaica, once I started restoring that um, experience, I saw that even how I speak is like singing a song and telling a story. And it's, it's it lights me up. It's, it's, I tell stories to myself. Um, sometimes I'm annoyed with myself, how much I fucking talk about all the stories I tell to myself. I, I saw that I want to do movies. I don't actually want to just want to be in a movie as an actor. I want to write the movie. I want to create teams and write the movie. I want to, I want to set like Tyler Perry. So <laughs> I realized that, but that storytelling is the, the, the thread that connects everything that has played a huge part in my life, from my relationships, from, from my breakdowns, to my breakthroughs, from, from, from being exiled, choosing my own exile, you know, and discovering my own freedom. It's the stories that I get to tell. And I remember in a point in my life when I had my biggest breakdown and I was looking at what do I want to tell my grandkids? First of all, I didn't even know that I wanted to have kids, but I was curious about what would I tell my grandkids as a grandfather. And I thought, I don't care what that story is. I just know that I want it to be mine. And I decided that my life is about storytelling and I am a storyteller. That's what I will identify as. And anything else is like vision. I love those two, but I love being a storyteller. Yeah. Yes, it's good. I mean, I, I went through exactly the same thing. You know, I've got my own practice and I left the financial world. I still have one foot in it, but I've left that world. Well, maybe a toe. And I moved <laughs> into this world and I'm, I don't know how many times I've changed my title. Because nothing felt like it was me. Like nothing felt like, it felt like they were 3D titles. It felt like they were things that you're supposed to call yourself, but nothing felt like it fit right. You know, and it, I, so I, I totally get that. And so I love the fact that, you know, visionary has shown up because I do vision things, you know, I envision things and I, and I do, and if it shows up strongly enough, I work very hard to make it a reality. I'm a strategist because I'm always strategizing, right? I'm always strategizing on what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to help my clients, how I'm going to make the academy better, how we're going to help the students, how, how I'm going to empower the faculty. So I am always the how to, I'm like, how to greedy. Like, I just want to know how I'm going to do it. And I figure it out. And so strategist feels better than, you know, coach, guru, transfer, you know, all of these names that people call themselves never felt right. Mm -hmm. So I totally, totally get what you're saying there. And then as I read a little bit further, so you're writing a book, the 27 life lessons, the jewels mm -hmm. of Jamaica. So tell us a little bit about your book. So the, the book, actually there's two. There's one gonna be published first, which is um, a, a small book called The Other Side, um, the perspective from someone who falls into the crack of society and being a queer being. So a, a little cute potion book. And then the 27 Life Lessons is a process um, book experience, which is gonna be a podcast as well. Um, and it's an incredible journey of um, the inspiration from the 27, um, club of uh, these incredible human beings who passed away at the age of 27 and you right. know looking at their lives um and seeing when I became 27 I saw that I was doing many of the many of the behaviors that they exhibited um as in like some of them were drug abuse drug abuse and all of these experiences um I saw that I had those kind of experiences too and John michelle Basquiat is one of the folks who inspire a lot in my life and um why am I, why do I want to cry talking about Jean-Michel? Um, but he, um, his life um, really got me to see that, that there was something inside of me that was different, but not different how I thought it was, you know? And because of how he lived his life 
and how the universe aligned and learning about what he went through. And he died at 27, so he's a part of 27 Club too. I wanted to explore what, what, what kept me going. Why am I not one of them who was um, drugged out, passed out on the bathroom floor? You know, why was that could have happened, you know? And I want to happen, but that. obviously you had to tell the story. And <laughs> maybe that's I, I'm, it. I'm a big believer in there's no coincidences. So mm -hmm. as you were sitting here talking about 27, I felt very drawn to grab something that was very close to me. So currently I am looking at all of the um, I Ching hexagrams, um, mm -hmm. the 64 that are connected to our DNA. And so I looked up the 27th as you were talking. Mm -hmm. So the 27th um, DNA strand, our gene key, is about what we were just talking about. The shadow of it is selfishness. Mm -hmm. And the gift is selflessness. And the most transcendent piece of it is altruism. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's this complete selflessness. And that is what our 27th gene, our DNA strand is all about. Mm -hmm. And it's from stepping out of our selfness, selfishness into our selflessness. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. when you were saying that, I thought I really have to look at what that was about because selfishness, you know, we self-sacrifice. How many people do that? They martyr themselves, right. And totally give up of themselves to try and, oh, I'm helping all these people, but they're not doing anything. There's no self-love at all. Mm -hmm. And then there's the self-centered, which we've seen a lot about in, in narcissism and the person who wants to control everybody and how fear-based all of that is really. And then when you move into a more love-based part of it, it's being selfless and doing things for the sake of doing things, you know, loving people and everything just for the sake of doing it. So I just thought I would just share that little piece of something, something. What a blessing. <laughs> What a blessing. I love that. The 27 G, I, you know, I love that you share that because that was my experience as well. Like discovering what, what the experience of self selfishness and self-centeredness and what this actual self um, selflessness looks like and um, taking on that, this project, this process, I keep on the process now because I saw how, taking this on was uh, a sense of restoration within my own um, experience. And, um, and even the process, my friend Zara, which is another coincidence, um, she is a visionary too in creative processes. And she helped me, support me with um, creating the outline for this, where it was um, offered to 27 people in my life. Anybody in my life who wants to be a part of this and share something that they've learned to the experience of me for the last 10 years I've been here in Canada. Um, and going through my experience. And it was incredible to see the amount of lessons that come in. And then I was going through a period in my life where I felt like, Aisha, I feel like I don't make a difference. Um, and it was and it was hard for me to see that I make a difference. Even when people would say that I'm making a difference, it was not enough. Um, and I think the pain of wanting to make a difference and not experiencing myself being like, like I'm experiencing myself making a difference, I think I needed to experience that in this process. And then seeing the lessons and picking the ones that were like authentically aligned, oh, how it moved me. How it it moved matters, me like everybody <laughs> matters. And it's interesting, you went through that journey and so many people are still going through it now. Right. Mm -hmm. It's that, you know, where do I fit? Am I making a difference? Why am I here? These are like really important and universal questions. And the end mm -hmm. of the day is we all matter. You know, if the moon disappeared, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> you know, we all serve our purpose. Right. If Jupiter disappeared out of we don't if the sun shut down, we'd be in trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. So we all serve a purpose. You know, everything serves a purpose. And, you know, and just you know, it is an ultimate purpose. And I think that's where the selfishness comes in because mm -hmm. we think that I have to, like, what do I have to do? And it's not about I, it's about us. Mm -hmm. You know, what do we need to do as humanity? Do we need to run people down in the street because of their religion? No. You know, do we need to bury a bunch of children because they're from a different culture? 
You know, we've, we've reached a very scary part, a very scary time. And, mm -hmm. you know, if things don't change, we'll basically cease to exist. So it, it, we must change. And so it's about accepting our part in the play. Mm. You know, it's accepting our part in the play and saying, you know what? I'm here for a reason. There's a part for me to play. And I just need to get past my own crap so that I can play it well. Mm -hmm. And that's what and we're here for. We're helping yes. to support you in getting, as we get ourselves past our crap, we get, we help support you get past your crap. And we've all got it. Mm -hmm. We've all got it, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us are just starting dealing with it. Some of us are still in denial about dealing with it. Some of us have moved way past it and we now other things are showing up that we didn't even know when we're dealing with that. How much I've grown in the last 14 months, just creating I awesome has been just ridiculous. And it, it's funny. I love your t-shirt, by the way. I, I it, it. It, you know, it says I am necessary. <laughs> I'm necessary, <laughs> bitch. So it's true. You are mm. necessary. We all are necessary. And even in those places where, you know, we transition, where our lives end for one reason or another, there is, there is meaning in that. Mm -hmm. And there's, and nothing's done. Nothing's over. You don't just cease to exist. It just, it's not a thing, right? So it's about getting beyond what we've been conditioned, moving into what is true. You know, so if you look at the Chinese, the Tao, it's about truth. Mm -hmm. It's simply about truth. Right. And the truth is different for everyone, but it's going to soon become the same for everyone because this division of truth is that's what's causing our issues. Right. So it's mm -hmm. got to start getting into the a same truth for everyone. You said something here um, about being a musician. And then you mm -hmm. said um, that you were having issues finding any spaces that would hold how strangely you show up. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, strange, just, you know, people might look at that and think, what is he talking about? But no, it's about how unique you are. I think it's just, you're, you're unique and people are afraid of what they don't understand. I think I get that now too, seeing it in my own life. You know, when I remember, you know, I'm 56 now, so I do remember before um, homosexuality came out. It was all hidden still, you know, mm -hmm. you didn't see very many people like holding hands, walking down the street, man, man, woman, woman, you know, and you didn't see it happening that often. And I remember the change where it started to transition. I used to live right downtown Toronto on Yonge street at the time. So oh. I remember that happening and it's starting to become a thing. And I remember you know, people screaming and saying things and whatever. And I thought, you know what this is, it's because they, you, you, people are afraid of what they don't understand. They don't see what's happening inside that person. So because they can't see what's happening inside them, they don't get it. They, you know, they think there's something wrong, but they can't see what it is. Mm. Right. When the fact is there's nothing wrong, <laughs> you know, it's just people love people. And they love who they love, you know, and that's just the way it is. And at some point, in some way, you know, I'm really looking forward to when this, I hope this evolution fully leaps in my lifetime, because I absolutely want to see this great love that we're all going to mm. have. What a blessing. Eh? What a blessing would be, be to be alive in that evolutionary leap where coming out of the closet is a thing of like, what? We used to do that? What <laughs> right? <laughs> right people used to see each other as different you know yes. and you know they would there was there was fear around that and hate mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. and we're going to be in some kind of history books of i don't even know if i, if I was if i'm alive then or you know reincarnated or whatever mm -hmm. i don't even know if i want to read those books right it's, it's kind of almost embarrassing <laughs> it is like especially for the intelligence that we walk with our um head so high how we we're intelligent beings doing the most stupidest acts to each other the one thing that i said that i remember my dad used to say and you can apply this to anything so he used to say to me aisha a man never needs to tell you that he's a man he just is he'll show you right and 
It was the same thing. I need to write it's that it's down. It's the same thing that when you say when you know no one has to tell you that they're intelligent, they just mm -hmm. have to show you. Like it's just it will show up in their behavior. Mm -hmm. It will show up. You know, no one needs to tell you that they're a loving person. It will show up. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see that about them. And I don't think that we need to walk around and say I'm all that in a bag of chips because it's gonna show up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's oh. it's time to stop talking the talk and just walk it mm -hmm. that's more powerful than anything you can ever say is just by living living it mm. you know and also i think that there's a there's a point now um just to add on to that that we're at a stage now we're plastering on another um act of 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 doing the walk is is um it's in itself poisonous as well because I've seen how I've, I I took a next step into that almost like doing the walk but really underneath like getting some accolade for doing the walk the walk doesn't have any accolades nothing there's a wonderful book written by um Don Miguel Ruiz, Ruiz called Mastery of Love mm -hmm. and in that book there's a chapter that talks about expectation and obligation. I love that book. I think I've read it 13 times and I've highlighted the whole book. The entire book is yellow. <laughs> it's, so, one um, it's one of those, the bindings are broken, you know, pages are starting to tear out. And mm -hmm. the expectation is we, it, we put something out there. And again, that's part of that selfishness and selflessness, right? We put something out there with the expectation that we're going to get something back. Right. And that is selfishness, because if I give you something because you're going to give me something. Then that is selfishness. There's a difference between exchange and value, for instance, you know, for I awesome, there is an enrollment fee because there needs to be an exchange that has to have value for you. Right. So I made it small just so that there's some kind of value exchange. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I say, hey, Micah, I'm going to come and help you paint your apartment, that beautiful green mango. Right. And then. I say to you, hey, you know what? I, I helped you with your apartment. Do you think you could help me with X, Y, Z? Right? If I do it, I should just do it. And you forget about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but we we do it to get something. And then that, and we don't know that we're doing that, but we do. Yeah. Because when we don't get it, we're like, oh, you know what? And I went over there and spent a whole day painting mm -hmm. an apartment. And he can't even do this one thing for me, there's, right? There's so the nasty <laughs> under the knife. There's the nasty under the knife. I love that you said that because I think about that in the sense of like love, how how um love is just this big performance, you know? And even seeing it in my own life, how performing love, like a performance of what is loving, you know? And, and then this distortion of what love is. And I've seen it in, in my own relationships and realizing that, oh my God, we're, I'm attached to this performance of what love is and people are, people fight each other about who is more loving and realizing that fighting is not being loving. It, no, <laughs> it's not. It's there. That kind of love is so toxic. And, mm -hmm. and not only is it toxic, but it's also very um, fear-based. Hey, everyone. Hold on one second. How I'm just going to shut this down. I'm it's trying me, to. Aisha Hogan. Okay, stop. I just want to see everybody. <laughs> I love that. And um, so it's just about trying to when you give, you have to love yourself. And that's, that's the thing. People start coming into that state of where they love themselves. And then you got to take it to the next level because to really love yourself means that you have to love everybody else mm -hmm. and have compassion for everyone else and understand that people are different. And that doesn't and, mean liking people. It's not about liking people. No, it's yeah. about loving people, right? It's about loving people. Like my arm can't hate its leg. Like it's just the same thing, right? So at the end of the day, you have to love humanity, even for its flaws, mm -hmm. you know, and hope that one day they will grow and we will grow and we'll be better than what we are. And, but there has to be that love of humanity. The minute we start judging or expecting, expectation will always lead to disappointment every single time. Right. So when you expect it's not going to help you. Right. And obligations. Mm -hmm. Right. We talk about even needing. We need to do this. We need to do that. We have to want to do it because need is an obligation. Obligation creates resistance. Yes. And the resentment and 
no matter how nice we are about it, it's always some kind of feels it feels like you're sacrificing if you're not choosing it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to be a, it, you know, it's about really starting to take ownership of our thoughts mm -hmm. and letting go of our addictions. And I don't mean addictions to drug and alcohol. I mean, addictions to our patterns, right? Addiction to the things that we do because it's part of our belief system, but it's not working anymore. Doesn't right. Matter. And that's an addiction as well. Being addicted to our self-limiting beliefs. Ooh, I never saw it that way. It's an obsession for sure. Um, right? Yeah. yeah, just like me snacking on them chips, darling. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you do that. And I think that what, as humanity, we've been on this, um, like a hamster on a wheel, like this circle, this vicious circle, right? But what we need to do is spiral out. Mm. You know, we need to not be a circle anymore. It needs to spiral out to something better and bigger and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I believe that I is going to play its part in that. Do I think that I is going to be the only thing? No, I think that it's going to be a part of the scheme of things for sure. Um, so I'm looking forward to your talk mm -hmm. on, uh, on the launch. You're, 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 it's about, it's called be juicy. So I'm excited to hear what that's going to be about. I'm so excited to hear what that's going to be. I think it's going to be so fun. And Me too. I'm excited to see what it's going to be too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like you to also just give us a quick, you know, what do you love about, you know, what drew you to iAwesome? What made you say, you know what, not only am I going to check it out, but I'm going to stay and I want to be a part mm -hmm. of this. Okay, just like really selfishly. First of all, Aisha, you um, and the, 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 there's a, I've become, I don't know if it's an addiction, but I've become obsessed with authentically aligned um, experiences of collaboration and uh, I live for it. It's like, it's just this refreshing, tantalizing taste on your tongue that is irresistible. And I think, at a certain point in my restoration of my life, um, life experience, I, I can sense those things. And this is one of them. Um, and the infrastructure and the, um, the, 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 what do you call it? The, the transparency in the communication, the, the operating, that, those are the things that I look at because I look at systems and structures that are being invented that has an experience at its essence that has uh, the possibility of longevity. And uh, many systems that I see that are being invented are still, be, still being invented from the old structure of how, what it means to be alive on the planet. And those old structures, you see how they demolish fast, no matter how big and, um, and how powerful they may seem, like evolution like happens and we are part of evolution and this has an evolutionary impulse to how it's operating and I want to be a part of that and that's something that and I've seen how it shifts and I see how I get to show up in my fullness I don't have to put on a performance I I, I, I get to grow and develop I, I love the experience of um the not censoring. I think that the, 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 the conditioning to censor is one of our um, greatest um, weapons against ourselves. Because I think the things we, we censor are the shit that connects us in our humanity. And we censor those things. And I think that um, for me, you can tell that I'm passionate about um, <laughs> I also, I could go on and on. <laughs> when I think about young people all around the world and the access that this can give to them, because I would have need, I, this is something I want for my life. And this is something I needed when I was um, being confused and lost in my experience of my own spiritual awakening and tapping into that kind of experience. So I want to play that part and I want to play with you. And I want to play with the other team. And I want a lot more um, diverse folks from different people of color to see that it is possible for them too to play this part as well. And they are souls that have lessons to teach. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. That was amazing. I love that. 
So at least it's good to know that my intention is getting out there and it's being understood. Mm. So that, that feels good. And it feels like a very good validation and confirmation. So thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you, Micah, for being part of this. And, and um, I'm so excited to do the interview that we're going to be doing during the launch and for people to really get to know even more about you. And so mm. right now we've got, um, a beautiful savings going on with I awesome. I awesome is not that much anyways, to be a part of like, really, we spend more on shoes. I do. Um, so <laughs> it's not that part. It's not that much to be a part of. And, you know, and now there's a great savings up until the launch. So it's $99 for your first year. Like, what is that? Right. And all of the free content that's inside of I awesome by all these wonderful teachers, the groups that are inside of I awesome, the, the built in community that's part of I awesome and the support that you will get. And I've heard from a couple of students that said, you know, I came in and it was kind of quiet, like all the courses were there. The, you know, and I said, yeah, because you have to start making some noise. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to reach out to someone, reach out to someone. We are there for you you know, but we're not going to be spamming you and, you know, like just barraging you with stuff. That's not the feeling of I awesome. I awesome is it's your solo journey. Mm -hmm. And we are there to be with you and hold your hand and support you and give you what you need and the tools and the strategies and everything that you need on your journey. Mm -hmm. Right. So I awesome is very different in that. And I love that. I, and I didn't that. know she was going to become that. I had no idea she was going to become that. You know, I, it's such an unconventional business model, mm -hmm. you know, and right from the beginning, you know, people were saying to me, Aisha, you know, where's your business model? Where's the structure? Where's everything? And I said, I don't want her in the box. I call I awesome a her. She's very nurturing. So um, I, don't, I, said, I don't want her in the box. I am just going to let her go and see what she's going to become. And I'm so glad that I did that because she completely evolved into what she wants to be and she's going to continue to do so. I resonate with that real hard. I resonate. It's time that we create, invent stuff outside of the box. My dad always says, think outside of the box. I don't even want a box. box. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of the box. <laughs> I, 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 so I, confining. It's so I have a, 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 um, a revelation about the box, if, not, if I may share. Sure, please do. It's a real quick one. So I, I, I have this revelation that what I experienced in the box in my life, even though I could see that the box was there, even being aware of the box, I actually held on to the box because I was attached to the box because this box gave me some kind of certainty that I will not be a rascal, that I will not be a total vicious, crazy beast, you know, that beast that I'm scared of. You know, I was scared that if I didn't have a box, at least some res res resemblance of a box around me, I would be a beast. And then I realized I've been so scared of the beast because I thought the beast was ugly, you know? And those are the shadows of ourselves, of myself that I couldn't be with. And once I started like touching that beast, I saw that it's a beautiful beast. Yes. And you just said something again, Mike, I could talk to you forever. Um, <laughs> so we've been taught conditionally, even as people who help other people along their path is that we need to release shadow that we need to release this. There's no releasing. There's only embracing, right? There's only bringing in embracing. We are light beings and darkness cannot survive without light. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's about bringing that into our light and letting it transform rather than trying to push it away because quantum physics states what we resist persists mm -hmm. with equal pressure. So pushing it away and releasing it isn't going to help. We need to embrace it and bring it in. Right. And help it to be better and to transform into a better version of itself. Right. So that's it's just it's huh, just seeing things so differently. It's been so enlightening, like really empowering. And I love it. Love it. So yes. Mm -hmm. And the box is, it's the addiction. Mm -hmm. Our box is our addiction. So it's like, ditch the box, like ditch it. You will be fine. Right. You know, ditch the box. Yeah. You won't <laughs> Rip die. It up, recycle it, get rid of it. You don't need it. Yeah. Something does die. Something does die. But it's the, 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 the made up you 
you get to invent a new you that you get to create it's like so scary but so alive like wow mm -hmm. so much better so much better because we spend our lives being what everybody else wants us to be get rid of the box so you can be who you want to be oh. right do you boo <laughs> <laughs> all right i will talk to you again soon and yes. uh, have a great day everyone you'll see me again a little bit later today have a wonderful day Bye.